Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's me, Labra, and today I'm making another episode of Fur History, but this time with a good friend of mine, Scar, who runs a, basically, the same show, but he covers, from what I've seen, more topics to do with older in the fandom, whereas I, I cover stuff like Hero the Wolf, Zabby Vac, all those kind of 2010s, he covers all way before that, and he makes an amazing job of it, you should go take, take a look at it, and also... Uh, me and him are making a video on his channel with that as well. And yeah, without that, without a doubt, enjoy the video. Corel the Raven was a furry musician born out of Perth, Australia. He's been involved heavily with the furry fandom since about 1995. Corel was well known for the furry fandom as a musician creating the furry album, 35 minute long album with furry orientated music. He also created one of the most well known and ear bleeding songs within the fandom, the furry song 2009. Now most songs in this era followed three different paths, emotional acoustic guitar shit, Lamours to Jours or Eurobeat Do De Do, but follow that. Out of any of these norms, he followed his heart and he made a reggae rap track. What the fuck? Now taking it into consideration the fandom wasn't as diverse with musicians, it wasn't easy coming up. It wasn't as easy as opening up FL Studio and doing a few da's, a few dumbs, a few years, and bang, you have a full album to upload. It was much harder back then, and our species simply congregated on fur affinity, a site built by piling shit on top of more shit. <laughs> While well, being heavily invested in the furry fandom, he made a lot of contributions to the fandom. He released an album of 60 to 1, having recorded 60 tracks from a lot of different furry music artists and slapping them on there. He was a figurehead of music during his era. He also ran a music maker panel at Midfur, which is a discontinued convention in Melbourne, Australia. Hitting his peak in 2009 with the furry song 2009, let's have a listen. I originally heard this song, and I'm sure a lot of you had too, from the quite famous video of the furry fandom. I'm not going to sit by anymore and listen to this crap flying around about furries saying they're sex maniacs in fursuits, they have sex in fursuits, and all this bogus crap. How much you want to bet the people that even put this crap out haven't even talked to a furry? They don't know really what a furry is. How about you go listen to Corel the Ravens, the furry song 2009, and then you come back and talk. But 2009 seemed to be his best year because he began to tone down his fandom presence and with no music releases and with why he had purged everything from Fur Affinity. And no, he even removed the page on WikiFur about him. He basically removed all of his fandom presence after 2009 because of this and his entire career and fandom presence stagnated and dropped off the face of the earth. So I brought my good friend Scar onto this video. He basically makes an identical series to mine and he's been making it longer than mine actually. Make sure you go check out more of his content and for us little guys on YouTube, as Big Smoke say, the streets is cold dog. Like it says in the book, the streets is cold dog. Like it says in the book, we are blessed and cursed. What fucking book? Same things make us laugh, make us cry. Hello first from the web. My name is Scar, and this is Curl's abrupt exit from furry fandom. Curl the Raven was well known thanks to his music in the fandom, most notably the furry album and his many iterations of the furry song. The years after his album really began to change his thoughts on the fandom. A lot of information on exactly why what happened happened is hard to nail down for a couple different reasons. Curl made an abrupt leave in 2011, and with it did a massive scrub of his online presence until very little remained. Let's just say anytime I talk about Curl, the Wayback Machine has been my lord and savior. So Curl deleted his fur affinity, asked to be excluded from Wikifur, and deleted his website, Bandcamp, and a whole lot else. He has made it clear he does not want to be remembered. The only reason I feel comfortable talking about him is the same reason I said last time. I feel it is worth keeping history alive. Very little should properly be erased. You can disassociate with it, but don't bury it. So the big question is, why? Why did Kura lead the fandom? Based on the only thing I have really been able to find, a specific archive of his For Affinity page, he has a journal talking about the topic directly. Apparently after icing the account for a year, and activity not dying down on it, he made it very open how sick he was of the fame. After rereading the post, since to be honest, when I was making the History of Free Music video, I was really getting burned out because of the sheer scope of it, I've gotten a better understanding. So here is what I can piece together. 
Starting as Kooky Womble, he got his first leap into the fandom with some music including the 1998 incarnation of the furry song. He would later rebrand himself as Curl the Raven and continue making music. He has made many iterations of the furry song and did an annual album called RPM that he did on top of his regular music schedule. After releasing the furry album and undoubtedly getting a surge in popularity because of it, the fandom was beginning to worm its way into his life too much. He speaks of the fandom becoming a tumor for him, psychologically damaging. An addiction? Maybe some personal trauma? It's important to acknowledge it doesn't appear he had a massive problem with the fandom itself, but rather just how the fandom became too integrated into his life. He does mention he no longer connected with it, and it had just changed too much from the 90s. In essence, they just grew apart. But the fame of Curl was keeping him grounded. This is why he abandoned the account, took up Kiwi Roo, and eventually began leaving the fandom as a whole. It's a little sad, but it's a pretty open and shut case. The thing is, many people were left where I was when I first found Curl. What happened? Well, now I know, but of the few discussions I found during my digging, mostly just curiosity, hinting at Curl's lack of mainstream status in the fandom like some musicians are today. To be fair, furry music has always been a niche art form. This was probably par for the course a decade ago. In a way, I suppose he got his wish. His name is almost entirely unknown these days. There's not much more to say about it. So without further ado, I will return you to Lab Rat. Thank you guys so much for watching. We've just hit 450 subs. That's mad. But yeah, I love you all individually. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. The next video is going to be a banger, trust me. With the Things come to an end.